Hello everyone. Can you can hear me right? Yeah, we can hear. So I, I'm one of your tutors. I'm Rahma. So I'm gonna start with the Python environment setup. Uh, I'll walk you through how you can do it. So I'm gonna share some slides. Okay. So I'm. Uh, just to give you a small introduction about myself, my name is Rahmet, I'm a developer. So in this uh, new cohort, I will be your tutor in different areas, and I will help you out in the Slack and everything. So I hope we will we'll have a good connection in the future to come. So I'm going to just start with uh, today's presentation. I prepared some few, few slides just to Give you some ideas what we will do today. It's visible, right? Okay, so we can start uh, from Python, uh, how we can set up, set it up in our operating system. Just to give you some definition what the package can do for us. Uh, as most programming language, Python is uh, an object or a good high level programming language, which has a lot of purpose, especially in this area of data science and machine learning. What it can do, this package can do for us, it can help us in text processing, data analysis. It has a lot of package for math calculations. So the package has a lot of big collection of pre-installed package. So this package can help us in this cohort a lot. So uh, we're just gonna go straight to how we can do the installation. So the first thing to start with our installation is the Python, uh, they have their official website to download the Python package, this one. This is a Python official package here uh, under downloads. I can share you my uh, slide if you want here. Okay. So from this, from Python official website under downloads, you can find different uh, version Python packets based on your operating system. First, you need to pick here. You need to pick it's Windows, Linux, or Mac. Choose your operating system. You can find a lot of packets uh, for Python, different versions. Since my operating system is Windows, I will show you on Windows. But on the slide, I have shared different YouTube videos for Linux, Mac. Uh, you can follow those videos uh, also and. It can guide you to how you can start installing your operating system. So there are two types of uh, two package types embedded in, in installer. So use the installer uh, first. Pick your 32 bit or 64 bit. Check your operating system uh, bit type and choose that. Uh, and install the installer part for Windows especially. So after the package is installed. I already installed the package here for me. Uh, this is if this in your case, if there's no Python in your package, you will not be seeing this. This I'm I'm thinking this because I already have installed the package. 
so I don't have to do it again, but just to show you the steps, you need to make sure you pick all these checks, the PIP, everything is necessary for the future to use the package perfectly. So make sure you install all of this. Uh, this one like this, the video show you, uh, the video that I showed you on the slide can show you better. So follow everything as the video says, this is the position, the uh, location where the package will be installed. So just install it. I'm not gonna do that because since I already installed it like I showed told you before. So it's a simple installation. It doesn't need much presentation. The other thing you must not forget is, you need, especially if you are in Windows, you must make sure you put the files under your environment variable here. System environment variables, the files must be put there. The packing patch, the packing, so it is a Python package. So under environment variables, under pass right here, this is my username. So under pass here, you can see it. My, my Python package version is version 12, 3.112. So I have put the pass here. After installation, you make sure you, you put the pass here in the script pass in the Python pass. This pass, you can find it under your Windows or for Windows operating systems. Your user, your operating system user, you, your operating system name, mine is under, put it under equal, so I'll click here. And this part after that, if you see this folder, most of the time it's not visible. So under view, you have to make sure you click with hidden items. So you make sure you, the hidden items is clicked. So under app data, in local, and under programs, this where it is, programs, and you can see here, the install Python, you find it here. If you do it correctly, these files will be present in your site also. So under Python version 12, this is the pass. You will copy this one and put it under the pass here. The first pass you will put is this one. In the second pass, you will put it the scripts. This is script folder, open it, and again, copy the pass. And make sure you also put it here. Just at the end of you know, just put a backslash. Uh, so in case this part in your environment variable, if it is above these two, click the part uh, to make sure you can move and up down paths like this. So make sure if this part, user profile, the path that's with this, make sure it is under the Python package for it to be, for it to work. So I hope this, I'm clear. I'll answer your question. So after this, if you click, your memory code. If the installation is correct, when you check the version, like this, you will get the package, the install package. So this is how you set up your. Sorry. This is how how we set up your Python environment. Still, is there a noise coming from my, my mic? Please. Yeah, I'm trying to more louder. I don't know why. Okay, I'll stop sharing.
don't know. Yeah, I think there's a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna finish. There is a little bit noise on my side, I think. I'll try to make it as quiet as I can. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna finish it up because uh, I don't think there is much I can do about the noise for now. Since it's a simple step, I will try to catch up with you guys on the Slack. Just follow the slide that I shared with you. So for the Git and GitHub, uh, just to give you a small difference between Git and GitHub. No, I'm not using an earphone, but still, I think the sound is a bit angry. I'll fix it next time. Just for now, let's just go, go with this one. So for Git, Git is a version control system. Uh, it's uh, it, where every command we use on Git is, we call it Git. It's a version control system that allows developers to track changes in their code. There are different commands we use in Git, and that process, that system, that version control system is called Git. Where GitHub is a web application that we use the web hosting service. So this one, this is the GitHub web hosting service. So the process here is simple. All you have to do is sign up. It's a normal. Uh, account creation it will ask you for an email and password do that so it's simple from uh, that since i already have an account here i already have an username and password all i have to do is sign in uh, for like i said you make sure you sign up then you will have your own dashboard so the rest of how this works will be presented by the other tutor in Tanam, I think. So uh, if you have question, you can share. You can ask me. Rahan, maybe. So in Tanam, if you're there, you can just start with telling them how the Git work, the version control. Anyone, is there a question? So, do you hear me uh, well? Uh, I am afraid that I have some issues with my internet, so I'm checking. Yeah, it's clear. I think it's clear. Okay, and yeah. you see my window. Uh, all right. So uh, let's do this. So, so right. sorry. So here I'm going to do a little demonstration, basically about how to use Git and GitHub. Uh, so Rahmat has just showed you how to install um, Git and how to create an account in GitHub. It's not a, a big deal. You just go to GitHub and you create an account there. So why are we using Git? I'm just going to say this uh, to clarify. Um, again, Git is a version control system. Basically, it can take um, uh, keep track of uh, the changes in any set of files on your computer. This is very useful when you are uh, coding, and especially when you are coding in collaboration with other people. Uh, because um, if you keep track of your, the changes, uh, like so many people are doing at the same time to the same code. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah. you share your slide shared. I'm not sharing. Um, sorry, it should be. Sorry, I will stop. Okay, uh, I'll try again. Um,
Um, I'm sorry. Do you see it now? Hello? <laughs> uh, this is um, okay. Uh, can you color? Yeah, can you clarify that you hear my voice and you see the slides at the same time? Um, okay. So yeah, basically, yeah, um, yeah, yes. Uh, go ahead. Someone is raising their hand. Nati K, do you have something to say? Uh, uh, urgently. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay, no problem. So yeah, so I'm just I was talking about Git and GitHub. So basically, Git is the system is a system that allows us to keep track of changes that we we'll make to the files for our, in our code. Um, especially when multiple people are working on the same code. GitHub is uh, like a, an open source. So let me just change this slide. Um, GitHub is a platform, cloud-based, where we will, sh we will basically store the code and manage it. Um, so I, I will move on completely directly to um, to like uh, how to start with Git and GitHub and not dwell too much on the the theoretical part basically so yeah once so you, you the first step you'll do is to install download and install git which is a software um and then you will create a github account uh with a username and in an email and then on your local machine you can will configure git with the username and email you just use so you so you're collecting connecting your uh, git on your local machine with the github so you use this um two commands uh, sorry uh, git configure all right um I, I feel like there are some issues with this with this uh sorry anyway it's not a big deal you can just look this up on the official um documentation on github basically how to authenticate connect your github with git um uh moving on to the important part this is what we are going to do this day this is what you want to basically you have to deliver today is you have to clone a repository that was provided you have to clone it your own account and then submit that link after maybe doing some changes or there so um i will move on to uh, a demonstration unless someone has some questions so far uh, we can hear you all right oh god um did you hear me do you hear me now <laughs> sorry i'm so sorry guys i can hear you we can hear you okay 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 so anyone has any question um so far i'm just going to move on to uh, a little demo okay um yes brooke i hope i'm saying the name correctly please go ahead yeah and, and uh, which link should we clone from github um uh, this is uh, like uh, is shared in the document that um, that was was shared with you. But I we will we will share that again if you want. Ask on Slack. Okay, someone posted it to you uh, in in the chat. So that's the the link that you need. But uh, um, I'm going to work on some uh, like uh, a demo repository. Just uh, I will actually show you how to do this. I will create. Uh, here is my. And like this is my GitHub account. That's what we will have once you create the GitHub account if you don't want to have one. And um, okay, let's just uh, work on like a cloning a repository for now. So I have this uh, repo here. It's just very basic. It has just one file, a readme file. Just created it a while ago. And what you will do is you go here and you see you can clone can clone the repository here so you you copy this link and then you go sorry so i have to share again um 
Um, I should I should share my desk game maybe. Hi. Okay. So, do you see my terminal? This is my terminal here. Um, okay. No, you don't see it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, uh, guys. Um, second. Uh, yeah, um, uh, okay, I will try to share my entire screen. <laughs> I will try that. Um, because, okay. Um, hopefully, come on. I don't know why I'm having an issue. So, do you see my screen now? Yes, thank you. So, I will go over again. So, I have the link for the repository here on GitHub. I will go here, clone using HTTP. HTTPS, uh, copy this link and go to my local, this is a terminal. And here I will just use uh, git clone um, uh, command and uh, paste this link, basically. Um, so it will ask me for my my uh, username and my password. Um, wait, sorry, something happened. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay, let me talk again. Uh, okay. Let me stop sharing for a second. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um. Uh. Support for password authentication was removed. All right. Do I need to set up SSH? Mm, all right. All right. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. I will share my screen again. I'm taking so much time. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Um, 
All right. Uh, uh, so I, right, okay, again. So apparently the cloning with HTTPS is not working and I have an SSH key um, set up. So uh, to do this, you have to go like, um, like on GitHub, there is like a very clear step-by-step -step how to do this. So it's easy to do. So I will just go on with uh, how to clone. Um, so on my terminal using get clone command and the link I got from GitHub and this is cloning the the repo for me. So if I use ls, which it should show me like I have this uh, hello world repo is now cloned in my local machine. See me there. So I'm now inside. You should see the readme file inside this um, um, <sighs> inside this repo uh, okay and because this is a git repo you can say use something like this to see that you are in the main the branch main and the branch is up to date with the origin which is like uh, the repo I like cloned it from um, okay now we can make any changes to this um, like files maybe I will like add another file like some kind of a uh, um, test uh, script, say suffice a script. Um, yeah, so I have to, if I use git status, it will show me that there was some changes now. Let's see, okay, it's telling me there's an untracked file here. To track it, basically to tell git this file, I want to keep track of the changes in it. I will add it to. I will add it to my um, with git commit. Basically, oh, sorry, with, uh, git add. It actually showed me. This told me how to do this. Like use git add file to, to include it. So I will do that. Now. Its status it just tells you like what's going on. So you see, like I have this uh, file that is now being tracked. Test.py, py, sorry, and um, uh, this this change has not been committed yet. Uh, basically, it wasn't. It hasn't been um, saved. Uh, and to save or to commit here, I will use get commit is and add a message. This is what minus M is for. Like, um, let's see, um, I'm adding a new script. That's it. That's all I have to do. And now that's, that's, that's done. I like made the changes basically here. Okay. With this, this, all right. Uh, yeah, so like here, we learned how to clone, how to like add the uh, after we have made changes, how to add these changes to get and how to commit them. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, after doing this, you will need to uh, push basically your. Um, so I'm, I'm because I'm cloning my own repo, so the changes will arri will will arrive here. But for you, it will be to your own account. So you will be cloning a, a repo from a different account, so not yours, your local machine, and then you can push it to your. Um, your like uh, github account here for me um sorry so i can get get push to do this 
and now I should be, be seeing this, the changes I made, the new file I had on my GitHub here. See, I'm like refreshing it. You see, the file is here. An empty file, just there. Uh, but anyway, um, the changes was, was committed and it was registered. Um, I think uh, this should be uh, like a good starting point uh, if you want to get more step-by-step -step stuff. Uh, I would say like my my favorite uh, advice is to always look at the official documentation first. So you go to GitHub maybe, but also you can ask anyone, like there are people from you who are already use this. Uh, you can ask us, you can ask on Slack, anything. You can ask now if you want. Uh, go ahead, please. I will stop sharing for now. So yeah, that's it guys. If anyone has any question. Um, so yeah, get command to like, um, there are several, so like, uh, many are very essential again. So let me share so I can, can show you here. Uh, I shouldn't have stopped sharing because it doesn't have, I'm not able to do this quickly. So essential get commands that you need so like we already show like if you are like uh, for example you're starting like um from, and uh, like uh, locally you're starting a new repo you will use um uh, you'll go somewhere like I go out of this create like a new directory this is a new repo and then i will use get in it so, Sorry, did I make a mistake somewhere? No, so I initialize a, an empty git uh, repository. Basically here, this is like a new repository. I will like, if I do anything here, if I like can add a file, um, uh, file, let's see, so just text, and then I will get it, get the status. It will, the status just tells me like, uh, uh, if there is any changes, something that I don't keep track, keep track of. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so. What am I seeing? Hello world here. Okay. Ah, well, because I didn't, didn't go. So, sorry, yeah, I, didn't didn't get, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't go yeah. inside. So, yeah, yes, you didn't now, go inside the new repo. Yeah, I made a mistake. So now I have, <laughs> I have my old Git, and uh, so I created the Git house so here. Yeah. So yes, I made a mistake. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, I, I will move on just to like uh, what other, other things that. So you have Git pull. Let's see, I will go inside the hello world one. Let me take for later. So, I mean, suppose uh, you are working with someone on the same repo and um, like someone makes changes, um, you can use get pull to get the changes like uh, from here. It's going to tell me there is nothing to pull basically. It's already up to date. But if I like and added a file there, like someone else added a file and I want to get that changes to my local machine, I will use get pull. Uh, what else? Uh, you can create branches. Branches is like a, a complete copy of the code uh, that you can work on, uh, work on separately and then you can merge it. Once you're finished, you're sure of your work and everything works fine. You can merge it to the main or like, uh, basically so to create a branch you use like check out in a new branch let's say like i want to test a new feature i'm just like a, like bad names but anyway now like uh if i use so this is check out this is a command check out minus b this is like the new a new branch and if i use get branch this shows me the branches i have so i have the main and have this test new feature is a new branch. I have it. So I can go back to the main link checkout without B. So this main. Now I'm back to the main. You can see. 
anyway anything that if you want uh, a new command of course you can use the advocate and help always if you are curious like you can see how here like a bunch of comments like clone and in it uh, like how to rename or move a file with mv um add like there are different like you can see them in the, in the help basically um yeah so i any i think they are basically i don't want to uh, like um, demonstrate so many that uh, like maybe you don't need right now so anyway so another question or because there is another part that needs to be okay uh emmanuel go ahead uh, okay can you hear me yes i hear you so for today's task uh, do we clone the network analysis repository only to our github yes that's what you need to do so you will go to this uh, you go to this repository and you have to clone it basically so use a template basically um or create a new repository here here Clone it here, sorry. But you just use this template will like uh, what will that do? Ah, so I can just uh, like uh, what is that? Can I rename it another repository basically. So you can just do that. Uh so because it's a template so you see that as other like mine didn't have this see this hello world didn't have a template or it wasn't created as a template but this one a template so you can just i mean your log you log in with your github account and then you can create a new repository just using this as a template create put some name here any name any name and um, um of course like this is like uh what is um a public or private you're going to use public that's what you need and then create repository once you create it then you have a link to that repository and you have to deliver that link basically um you still need to use clone um to work locally on your machine because this just creates the repository on your like account github account so like these are just a, a few steps differently from what what i just did but it's mainly like uh, the same effect in the end is this, is this like what i said clear i hope i didn't make a mistake what i said was this clear uh, or not emmanuel yeah, I understand. It's very clear now. Okay. Good. Um, anyone else? Uh, otherwise, we need to move to uh, to the next part. I took uh, so much time. So, uh, so we'll take this question and then it's uh, uh, us. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Uh, I was about to ask you about. How about git ignore? Are we how are we gonna ignore some data? Oh yeah, okay, that's a good question. Um, so uh, so git ignore is just um, when you add a file to your repo that you don't want the git to keep track of it, you just want it to to be left alone. You don't want to push it. You don't want to uh, you don't want to push it to your like uh, GitHub account. You have to add it to a file called git ignore and um so um uh, okay um actually don't exactly remember um how to add it here with the uh, um I think we just create, create a good ignore and just add it there. Sorry. One second. 
I say like <laughs> um Mm -hmm. I to... Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let Let's like um. Suppose I have a like I have a file. Let's say it's data. It's a data file. So if I do it, um. Say like use get status to tell me like this data file is like need to be added to be tracked, but I don't want to do that. So um, I want to ignore it. To to ignore uh, a file just from the terminal. Um, I just do this. Is get ignore? That's correct. See, like I, I don't even remember. Um, you know what? Um, Um, okay, so I'm not wrong. So um, I'm sorry. So I, I I will try this, but maybe um, I'm not. Uh, so what you will have, you will need to do to have is a git ignore file. I don't have it here. Let's see. I don't have file here. So in my repo, I don't have a git ignore file. So I will create it. It should be called this git ignore. And um, okay, oh, sorry. of course I don't see it like this. Um, now uh, I will I will open this. I will edit this get ignore file. So get uh, the edit is uh, is uh, like a text editor in um, what's happening? In Ubuntu. Oh, yeah, it's open. Sorry, don't see it. And then what is the the file I want to ignore? Called data txt. So I added it here. Save and close. Now you see. Um, so I have now two files. Sorry, you see, in get status, I I don't see the data tx txt anymore. I just only see the get ignore. So what I need to do now is just to add that to be tracked. Um, let's add. Sorry, get ignore. And uh, commit, as I said, like we did, like ignore data file. So to show you what I did. Um, now you see, I was going to do get push that will uh, like put the code uh, on my GitHub account, right? Now we go there. We are not supposed to find the the that the txt anymore. There, sorry. So. You see, we have the get ignore here, but we don't have the data txt. So, um, so it's here. Okay, I only added the name of the of the of the file. If it's a, it can be like a folder, so you just add the name of the folder um, with like a, a backslash and a star to to show that all the files in that size dot folder should be ignored. Uh, is this? Um, I'm sorry. I, I just took a, a bit of time to remember because uh, like Git doesn't have a command to ignore um, a file just directly. Sorry. Uh, so was that clear enough? How to do this? 
is Tavanos, who's, who's the person who's yeah, 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 it's clear, okay. yeah. Yeah, so you basically have a git, uh, .git ignore file that you have to add the names of all the files that you don't want to keep track of. That's the main thing. Um, later on, you will learn that you, when we create a new repository, uh, there are like uh, templates basically to for git ignore that will automatically ignore like some kind of files that always appear, like for example, you can say like I'm using Python and then it will ignore for you all the files that typically appear in Python that you don't want to, you don't want to keep track of, like environment files and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but basically it's so this git, git ignore files that you have to add the names to. So I will stop here. Uh, if you have any more questions, ask on Slack. Uh, I'm sorry I took so much time. Uh, I will, I will um, hand off to the next tutor. Um, okay. You can hear me. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I will present uh, focusing on um, what's EDA and how can we implement EDA for different business goals. Um, <clears throat> um, first of all, um, data encompasses a variety of district entities, such as um, numbers, words, events, or like measurements or observations, and um, every um, event or process across various disciplines includes like in a biology, economics, engineering, uh, marketing, um, involves uh, a, a collection and storage of um, such uh, massive data and extracting valuable information from this data and processing will just useful um, insights leading to the generation of knowledge. However, a crucial question will arise. Um, how can we derive meaningful data, val uh, which is va a valuable information from this data? And uh, to answer this, we can conduct. Sorry to interrupt you. Could you pick up more? They're saying you can hear me. What about now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Everyone? Is this voice clear now? I think they can hear you. Okay, continue. Okay, as I, um, as, I, as I said before, um, to derive this meaningful and valuable information um, from these uh, huge data, we can conduct an EDA, which means exploratory data analysis, um, which is a systematic process that involves um, examining a, uh, a given data set to uncover patterns uh, or identify anomalies and test hypotheses and validate assumptions using um, different statistical um, measures. Um, let's look on the stages of an EDA, um, which, which are the distinct stages that constitute the process of um, a data analysis. So, um, so, so fundamentally, it encompasses um, four key stages. Basically, they are um, the first one is problem definition. Then, after that, uh, there is a data preparation. After that, there is a data analysis, which an EDA will be uh, resides in. In the final end. The most important one is um, results development and um, presentation for um, business owners or stakeholders. Uh, when we look at on each point, uh, the first stage is problem definition, which is um, prior to extracting meaningful insights from the given data. It's crucial to articulate and define um, the business problem that um, needs solving, and the problem definition serves as uh, 
guidance force for executing a data analysis plan. And the key tasks involved involved in the uh, in this stage includes um, outlining the primary um, objective of the analysis. Uh, the other is specifying deliverables, delineating roles and responsibilities, assessing um, the current state of data, or establishing a timetable might be um, the main goal. And um, the second basic process in the EDA stage is the data preparation. This stage um, involves um, the application of methods to uh, to ready the data set for um, actual analysis or future analysis. Here we can identify data sources or define data schemas and tables uh, comp to comprehend the primary characteristics of the data. And we can also clean the data, eliminate non-relevant um, data sets. Um, we can transform the data and segment the data into um, required portions um, for um, different analysis. So the third one is uh, the actual data analysis. So this constitutes a main phase focusing on descriptive um, statistics and true examination of the data. Key tasks in this uh, portion um, might be summarizing the data or uncovering hidden correlation and relationship within um, the data set. Um, and also might be constructing predictive models for future uh, machine learning activities, um, assessing model performance and calculating accuracies might be the end goal for this uh, portion. And the techniques employed for data summarization includes like summary tables, graphs, uh, and many more um, descriptive statistics, inferential statistics we can use. We can use also correlation statistics to uh, group and search and to find patterns in a mathematical way. In the final, <clears throat> the final stages, um, results development and presentation for the business owner for, or for the stakeholders. This stage um, entails presenting the data set to the targeted audience through different kinds of graphs, um, summary tables, um, and also it might mean maps, uh, diagrams, and also um, this um, presentation uh, holds significant importance as a result uh, derived from the data set should be interpretable by um, business stakeholders aligning with their um, primary objectives. Um, and when we come to the meaning or the making sense of a data. So um, an inter, an, the basic or the integral aspect of effective data analysis is the identification of uh, the type of data being um, examined. So um, in this section, we will see into various data types encountering um, during different kinds of data analysis. So different disciplines curate diverse types of data for varied purposes. For instance, medical research, medical researchers manage patients' data, and also um, university maintains records of students' grades and um, some teachers' uh, data. And also, real estate industries can compile a data set related to houses and buildings. So, many different companies or many different uh, business owners might have different kinds of uh, data set. So when we come to, for example, in this in this data set, um, there are four observations. Um, like they were there one, they were there two, up to they were there five. And each observation delimits variables like patient ID, um, name, address, door, email, gender, and weight. It's basically a medical data and the data set can broadly be categorized into um, two groups, which have a numerical data sets and also um, a categorical data sets. Um, numerical data set, when we mean um, a numerical data set, uh, these types of data involve measurable quantities, such as a percentage, like you see in the given table. Um, the weight of each patient might be also considered as 
<coughs> and numerical data sets. And also, there is also another data type, which is a discrete data. Discrete data is valuable, uh, which are basically enumerable. For instance, um, in uh, 200 coin flips, we can say that the number of heads can take value from 0 to 200, which is a finite value. And a variable representing a discrete data set is termed as like a discrete variable, taking a fixed number of distinct values. For example, the country variable can have fixed values like Nepal, India, Norway, and Japan. And we can term this as a discrete variable. Similarly, the rank variable for a student in a classroom can take a value from one to uh, like a finite number, like one to up to 10. So it's a finite uh, count. So we can term these types of data as um, a discrete data set. The other types of data um, set is a categorical data. This data type describes the quality of an object, such as gender. Um, also, we can uh, use uh, an address type or like a movie genres. We can turn these types of data as a categorical data. It is commonly known as a qualitative data. Sorry, in, uh, could, you yeah. could you increase the font size? It's a little bit worse. Okay. What about you? Great, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so some of the examples, like I mentioned, are um, like uh, a gender might be um, categorized into a categorical, a, a categorical data, um, a marital status like divorced, legally separated, married, like a finite number of categories. You can term these all, uh, types of data sets as a categorical um, data types. So <clears throat> when we come to the visualization part, um, as a data analyst, there are many important goals um, to achieve. One in the main goal is to present a more, um, uh, a more beautiful vis uh, visualized data for um, business owners, for, for stakeholders. So presenting um, results to stakeholder is like a very complex in a sense that our audience may not have enough technical um, know-how to understand any programming jargons and other technicalities so that we can present them in a more um, visually appealing, in a more beautiful visualization uh, methods. Like there are many different techniques to achieve this. You can use like um, a line chart, a bar graph, um, scatter plots, area plots, and there are uh, many other visualization techniques to achieve these kinds of codes. When you come to, uh, for example, line chart is one of them, and when you come to the line chart, a line chart is uh, employed to depict the correlation between um, two or more continuous variables, and it is widely utilized in uh, mainly in finance and it's, it's primarily showcases the closing price over a period of um, time, uh, basically for finance. And these line charts are adaptable for various time frames, um, commonly used for day-to-day -day, um, price changes. And uh, line charts are effective when dealing with data and that exhibits continuous progression, like the price in the finance. And if um, someone's organization aim to monitor data behavior over a specific duration. Line charts are the main um, endpoint where are more variables than other um, visualization methods. So this is basically a basic line chart that have in the x-axis represent the fund the funded date, which is a time, and the y-axis represent this um, the number of pores and the line graph will depict the um, number of pores through the period of time. So the other one is um, a bar chart. A bar chart can be depicted um, either horizontally or vertically to symbolize um, a categorical variable. 
um, a bar chart are commonly employed to differentiate items among different sets and it will facilitate the tracking of various um, various categorical variations over a period of time it also illustrates categorical data using rectangular bars um, where the height are <coughs> proportionate to the value they um, signify in in these charts uh, one axis plots categorizes while the other represents the value scale and the bar um, share equal widths enabling a quick um, comparison of um, the data and the other one is <coughs> scatter plot which is a type of um, data visualization uh, that displays individual data points on a two-dimensional graph and each point each point on the graph represents the value of um, two basic variables allowing for the examination of the relationship between them one variable um, is plotted on the horizontal axis x-axis and the other is plotted on the vertical axis y-axis so in a scatter plot each data point is represented by um, a dot and the overall pattern of dots can reveal um, the presence or absence of a correlation or a trend over a period of time between the two variables and scatter plots are particularly useful for identifying um, relationships uh, relationships patterns or if there is any outliers in the data so the other main um, <clears throat> visualization is a pie chart which is sometimes called in the circle chart is a way of <clears throat> summarizing a set of nominal data or displaying the different values of a given variable like um, basically it will depict a percentage distribution for um, many other categorical data sets and this type of um, chart is a circle divided into a series of um, segments and each segment represents a particular category in the area of each segment is the same proportion of the circle as the categories of on the total data set so for example in this pie chart um, it represents the sales as the sales uh, a retail store um, makes in a month and the slice represents the sales of toys home decor furniture and electronics so these are the categorical data and the um, like 43 percent of sales were from furniture 28 percent from electronics 50 percent from toys and uh, other so these all categories will add up to 100 percent but uh, as should always be the case with the uh, 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 graphs the main and the final thing is the um, data transformation how can we transform data so that we can get the end result? So we can mention two main <clears throat> points in here, which are merging data frames and rem uh, removing data dupl uh, duplica duplications. So um, when we come to handling handling missing data or um, merging um, data frames or uh, removing data duplications, we have to perform these kinds of um, um, biases so that um, it can not affect the outputs or the end results that we can show for the intended audience. For example, um, on handling uh, duplicate data, identical or very similar entities within a data set uh, can introduce a uh, can introduce a bias and a disorder in our um, visualization analysis and effective handling of duplicate data um, involves like identifying and removing redundant records while preserving the integrity of essential information like when we say removing data duplication we we can simply determine there is a table which can hold um, different data columns and we can have a duplicate data entries which which we can infer like it is a row so 
we, we have to um, drop or we have to remove this duplication so that our analysis uh, may not be distorted or biased and the techniques like duplications um, like uh, we can use unique identifiers and assessing similarity metrics uh, we can employ um, to manage and eliminate duplicate entries so we can properly manage duplicates duplicates so that we ensure the accuracy um, and reliability of um, a much more data-driven um, insights. So the other one is also um, handling missing data. This is this mostly happen when uh, at the stage of data collection, uh, there might be <clears throat> some issue or some data missing, and we can have an empty or a missing data in our uh, data pool so that we can we there are many different kinds of techniques so that we can handle those missing data like using python we have a pandas data frame which can which we can import which is a built-in uh, python library and which we can import and utilize and which is mainly intended to do these kinds of operations and there are like Two techniques like forward field and backward field. We can um, forward the field or by backward the field. Um, uh, we can use these techniques for our intended purpose and by examining our data sets or by examining our um, how to handle those missing data, we can um, handle or we can ensure the data integrity that's <clears throat> so that we can um, get a more accurate and the more um, descriptive uh, visualization at the end of the process in which we, can, we will present to our intended audience so um this is all for me if you have any question you can ask Anyone? Yeah, I can share the slides. I will share it on the Slack channel. Okay, Mahalit, Melat, go on. Thank you. So I was going to ask um, from the steps you said earlier. Uh, one of the things to do is data, uh, ensuring if the data is missing or not. How do we host the, if, I, if we ever have a missing data? So basically, this is, this operation is done yeah. through a built-in libraries, like I mentioned, using a pandas uh, library. We can we cannot know uh, manually, or it might be um, a much painful job to do like to find any missing entries in the table or in the data so there are um, i will share it on the slack there are many different python libraries to handle this so we cannot do you just have to import the um, the main methods and you can utilize those methods so yeah it's easy i will share it Anyone? If you have any question. Um, hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um. Hi. I have a question, but it's not related to uh, Chris DM. It's related to uh, Python. Okay. 
Uh, so my question is that I've been using Python um, on my as a virtual environment, but when I check the version uh, on my command, it doesn't bring any version. But when I activate my virtual environment, I can see uh, the Python version. Uh, also on the system environment variables, I can't seem to see uh, the path of, the the path of Python. So I'm um, wondering why. So um, do you do you need do you install uh, Anaconda Python package manager? Uh, yes, yes, I had installed it uh, a while ago. So when you activate uh, the Anaconda, it show, it showed the Python version, but when it is deactivated, it it didn't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah, basically that means there is no um, any Python installed on your system. Okay. So that's wh that's why these uh, types of environment managements occur. Like you can use Anaconda, or also um, you can use the built-in um, Python three v VNV um, package manager to install those um, um, Python dependencies or Python packages. Um, in a more packaged way, you um, it's not recommended to install it just on your system. You just have to use some environment and you can install those um, dependencies on that specific environment. So, yeah, you can continue working on Anaconda um, Environment Manager for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm done, Rahmat. You can continue. I think we all. Uh, I'm done also. If you have any questions, you can ask us. I mean, they are asking you if you can share them, your slides. Yeah, I'll show it on, on the Slack. Okay, is there any question? So we can wrap this up and continue with your project for the later submission. But if you have no question, I guess this is the end of it. Thank you for being here. Okay, bye.